Hey guys, Chris again with Project Nerf, and this time I'm going to show you how to take one of my favorites to the next level. Today we're working on the Adventure Force Villainator. Let's get at it. Alright, so we got the Villainator out here. We're going to get the stock numbers on it. Uh, full disclosure, these are used darts, so they're going to vary a little bit, but uh, let's take a look here. Alright, let's take a look. Are we at 12 reads, a high of 86, a low of 73, and an average of 80 feet per second. And again, guys, these are uh, used darts. Well, I think we even blew the head off of one of them. So, but let's get it inside on the bench and see if we can't improve that. Alright guys, so we're on the bench with the Adventure Force Villainator, and we're going to take a look at doing a few things to it here. So, uh... One of the first ones is this blaster is very easily uh, modified and converted to fire short darts as well as long. There are no dart posts in the cylinder. That's awesome. So there's just a couple little tabs in here that we got to take out and then wham, we can fire short darts out of it. Uh, even shotgun them. So definitely got to take care of that. We're going to look at upgrading the spring. Now I saw Cap put a K26 in this and he was hitting like 115 with it, but it started misbehaving pretty quickly. So we're going to look to up the spring, but we're not going ham on that. And then lastly, uh, the stock. I know they make 3D printed uh, parts that you can put in strike stocks and stuff on, but I'm thinking uh, of going a little more extreme with that and maybe putting a, uh, a buffer tube on here and uh, using like a standard M4 stock. Anyway, uh, let's get at it. Let's uh, get it apart and see what we get into. All right, so saved you guys the agony of uh, taking the screws out of this thing. Obviously, to remove the drum, just give it a good yank. It comes right out. Took the screws out, uh, as you can see here in my little container. They're all the same length. That is fantastic. Thank you, Adventure Force. You're making our life easy. All right, and then we've got two pins here that ride right here uh, for the priming uh, bar. Now, my rearward one came out uh, quite easily there, so we don't want to lose that. And, uh, but anyway, let's open this thing up, or see if we can open it up. Okay. Make sure we didn't miss any screws or anything like that. And there we go. We are in. So, not too big a deal there. All right, so the first thing that I'm going to notice about this, again, we have a that big offset priming bar. It's got a pretty chunky spring in there, but I think we can make all of that work. All right, so this part and this part uh, serve absolutely no practical purpose that I'm aware of. Uh, they're not locks. They simply get in the way of empty chambers on the drum. So the lower one obviously blocks the lower thing like this, and if there's a dart sticking out, it just folds that out of the way. So we're going to lose those because... They obstruct the barrel if we're going to try to use short darts and they don't get pushed over. So we're just going to take those and uh, throw them in the bin there. So great, quick, easy little mod. Now our blaster is ready to fire short darts if you don't mind ram loading them into the uh, cylinder. So let's take a look at this rearward mechanism here and see what we've got to do to get in here and get that spring out. Okay, so we're going to take this catch mechanism out of here. Hopefully I'm not too far off a of camera for you. Um, we're going to go ahead and pull the trigger out. Probably not necessary, but we're going to do it anyway. It's a big uh, top hat type screw. Fix that up. Trigger. That's quite a healthy trigger return spring. Shouldn't be a problem there. All right, we've got a couple of locks up here. And it looks like we'll probably have to take this out. Remove that little guy. All right, let's see. All right, so we have a lock there. And pretty much the entire assembly is coming out of this thing, so pay attention, guys, and don't lose your parts. Because literally, we just 
pull the whole uh, priming assembly out of this thing. So, no problem there. Okay, again, no AR in the plunger tube. That's uh, pretty easy to deal with there. This is a drop in the lock here. And you know what, I'll go ahead and take this off too. Just say I did. So now we have completely gutted this thing. Uh, so if you were gonna paint it, uh, that would be you know, really, really easy to work with. So set the shell out of the way. All right, what we're going to do here is tap this pin out. Now, for those of you that have never done this, it's quite easy. I'm gonna grab a board that's got a little hole in it, put the pin over the hole, and just tap, 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 and drive it out. Let me grab that stuff, I'll get right back to you. Okay, so I got this like a kind of a little project board here. You can see I've got a hole drilled in the, in the, uh, in the side of it. And uh, we're just gonna line this up, take uh, something you know, reasonably sturdy, a little screwdriver or a punch or something like that, and tap that pin straight through down into that hole. There we have it. This is directional. So now we got that apart. We've got our spring off. Definitely got to go ahead and shim that O-ring up. It's got a nice pad on the plunger, of course, for a blaster with no AR. Um, that doesn't surprise me any. And uh, the spring is eh. So I think we can find ourselves a, a pretty reasonable replacement here. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and put a wrap or two of Teflon tape around this, uh, the O-ring here, to get a little bit better seal inside the plunger tube, and then we'll work on seeing if I can find a spring. All right, guys, so I put one wrap of Teflon tape on this, but I folded it in half or doubled it over. So it's, it's two wraps of Teflon tape, and that's making a really nice seal. If I can kind of close this over with my thumb, you can really, yeah, it's making a great seal on the O-ring, which is what we want. Um... Uh, hopefully get a little extra performance out of it that way and then the uh, the stock spring here is not a punky spring it's actually pretty good but I've got a rival spring here um, might have been a stock chrono spring or something like that that I k26 um, it is the same diameter uh, the same frequency but uh, hopefully you can see it's just a little bit heavier wire so it's a little bit meatier spring not a whole lot so what we're gonna do is I'm going to leave the one squared end on it um, that rests in this cap because we don't want to tear our cap up. The other side, uh, we're just going to go ahead and cut off, and I'll probably cut it, oh, I don't know, maybe a coil longer than the stock one and see if that works. I can always cut it down a little more if it starts acting up. So we're probably going to cut it off right about here where my finger's at and uh, put it in and give it a go. All right, guys, we're reassembled here with our upgraded uh, plunger seal and our upgraded spring. Um, not a difficult blaster to put back together. Just again, pay attention when you open it up to where all the little parts sat. Uh, part of the reason that I didn't mess with it for a while in the front part of the video and I wasn't waving my hands about like I normally am is that I wanted you guys to have the opportunity to get a good look at the inside of the blaster. You can always wind the video back and pause it just to make sure where all your little parts are going. Uh, the only things that we removed were the two little flag locks here and here. Um, everything else goes back in just like it was. Uh, I didn't change any of the other springs, none of that stuff. So uh, at this point in time, we're ready to go ahead and shell the blaster back together. Now our upgraded spring load, it's got our plunger pushed up just a little bit, but I don't think that's a big deal. Um, I think that we'll, uh, we'll manage that just fine. So we're going to go ahead and try to put this bad boy back together. All right, so we've got that there. All right, so one of the things that I can see, again, because of our upgraded spring load, we're going to have to push this forward a little bit with a screwdriver uh, to get it to set. To get it to the part of the shell where it needs to be. Pretty much there it went. Okay. 
All right, so there we go. All right, so I said had to finagle a couple of things, had to push the plunger tube back a little bit. Again, our enhanced spring load has got that uh, preloaded the hair. So we're gonna put a few screws in it. Normally I wouldn't do this with my driver, but there we go. So anyway, we're gonna slap a couple more screws back to get in this bad boy and uh, give it a test fire, see what it does. And guys, she is back together now, so I guess it's the moment of truth. Let's see if it still works. Well, it primed back and caught quite nicely. It, it slam fires. All right, so I've got a few darts in the drum here. Now I've got uh, a couple of the AF waffles, and then I've got a few uh, AF Pro short darts, because with those uh, little dart gates removed, we should be able to fire boats. And let's spin this bad boy around something along these lines here. Probably needs to go one more. There we go. Let's see. Yeah, it works just fine. It fired all those out of there. All right, guys, we're done our performance work on this thing, and I'm really anxious to get it back out on the chrono and see what we got. Love to see numbers up around 100. That would be so awesome. Um, that would put this thing right in the uh, premier range for uh, Arena Wars, which is where I would like it to be. And 100 is a very respectable number for an HVZ as well, and I absolutely love my Villainator, so if I can, if it's around 100, I'm going to be just ecstatic. But let's talk about... Uh, uh, we'll use the term cosmetic pretty loosely, but... Uh, uh, more, maybe more utilitarian here. So, uh, one of the things that grieves me is the stock is really short on this blaster. If we, we push it up here, I go to shoulder it, I, you know, I really have to choke up on it, and I don't like that. I'd like that stock to be, you know, maybe out here, you know, another couple, two, three inches now. Um, it's longer than the, uh, stock off of the Spectrum. I have one of those here, a little buffer tube stock, and that's that's it. That's as far out as it goes. But uh, uh, thinking another way here. So I've got this very, very old uh, spring-powered airsoft, right? Pull it back to prime, pull the trigger, it works. And But this thing has got some cool parts on it. Um, it's old and beat up, but it does still work. But the uh, the stock on this is really... Uh, really cool. It just, uh, there's a switch here and, and it lifts off and the whole buffer tube comes off of it. So Mike could do something with that, but uh, just looking at it, it's got this great Picatinny rail on the handguard. Um, so I'm thinking we're going to go ahead and rob a couple of pieces of that and install them on the front of our Villainator. So let's uh, let's steal a couple of those off and then we'll, uh, we'll get back to you. All right, so I robbed a couple of the rails off of that Airsoft Blaster and guys, I... <laughs> Obviously unintentional, but holy crap, it was just made for this. Look at that. It fits absolutely perfectly right there on the side. Uh, so, anyway, I've got these, uh, hopefully you can see it on camera here. I've got these little little screws. They're pointy, so they should drive in, and then they're quite coarse. So, you know, we're just going to drive those on, screw them in. Shouldn't interfere with our inner barrel at all. we got a little gap in there, so this, uh, this should work out really well. I'm going to screw those on, and I'll come back to you. We'll see if we can figure out what we want to do with that stock. All right, guys, I told you those rails look like they were actually made for this thing. They're not. They just came off an airsoft gun, but how convenient. The length is just great. So all I did here is I put them on where I wanted to be. I took my uh, drill with a really little drill bit and uh, just piloted it through the holes real quick, uh, through the outer shell, put my pointy screws in, drove them down. Those things are on there really good. They're not coming off. Um, so again, we can put our attachments on the side of the blaster now. Like I said, flashlight, uh, laser pointer, whatever it is that you might want to put on it. So awesome. Let's see if we can do something with that stock. All right, so looking at this thing, again, the stock is a couple inches too short. So I want to put a full-length buffer tube on it. So what we're going to do, I think here, is start with the uh, with the Spectrum stock. Take the little tailpiece off when we're not going to be using that. And uh, because of how long this is, right, when it butts up there, you can see that this first screw hole right there comes to about the tail of the blaster so if we cut this off here we should pretty easily be able to graft uh the buffer tube here if i cut this log off should just be able to kind of drill that out and then just screw it uh in place and uh that should give us a pretty functional buffer tube stock 
So anyway, I'm going to put this bad boy on the uh, bandsaw and uh, see what we can do with it. All right, guys, I think this is going to be pretty easy. I dismantled this, took all the screws out, took the uh, switch out of it. And uh, so you can see here, I cut the end off the buffer tube stock, or, you know, the little plate that uh, held it to the airsoft gun. And I put it on here and I traced it around. So we're like so. Let me see my silver tracing. So we're going to cut that out, slide this inside, and then put a couple of screws in it, and we should be good to go. So, anyway, I'm going to get about doing that and uh, get back to you. All right, so I've got my my deal here. Uh, this is real easy, guys. It's got one little spring that goes in. Whoops. Fumble. It's real easy when you don't drop the spring on the floor. But it's simply the spring sits in the hole in the orange tab here. And then that just sits over top of the, the post. I mean, it's just that simple for the uh, the lock on this. And that works just fine. So we're going to put these... If I can stop dropping stuff. We're going to put the screws back in it. Whoops. I hope I get a Phillips. Then we get this low one in here. And then once this is together, guys, we'll go ahead and uh, finish up the rear sanding till the buffer tube actually fits the hole. But I like it together and snug uh, to do that, to get the uh, the best fit that we can get. And then we'll drill it and put a couple of, couple of screws in it, and uh, we should be good to go. One more screw. The reason it's not all five is we cut this rear post out. So you've got our hole here, and uh, and we're pretty close. I mean, it actually fits, but it is opening it up just a hair. I don't know if you can see it on my thumb, so we're just going to sand that just a little bit more, um, and then drive a couple of screws in it, and Bob's your uncle. So anyway, I'm going to take my Dremel and my small sanding burr, uh, refine this just a little bit more, and uh, see if we can't make it fit just right. And there we have it, guys. Uh, just sanded that out a little bit more. Uh, slid my buffer tube in. Uh, piloted a couple of screws with my drill, right? Drove two screws in on each side to hold that. It's, it's good and sturdy and strong. Touched it up with a little black paint. And now we can do any variety of, you know, buffer tube stock. This is the one off of that, uh, Gel Ball M4 that, uh, Zenvio Toys sent me. So. Fits on there super cool. Little stuff. And then I've got an Airsoft one again that uh i really like because it's got the sling mount on it and uh it was the one i think originally designed for the buffer tube but there we go there and of course we can so yeah let's uh get it on a blaster and see what it looks like Back out on the phone now again. We've done our spring upgrade and uh, improved that seal some, so uh, anxious to see uh, what kind of performance we get out of it. It is definitely a little bit heavier prime, but uh, not too bad. I don't think we're going to do anything egregious here. So uh, same darts. We're going to go ahead and do the uh, used AF waffles and uh, see what we get. Last couple uh, were really nice there. Let's take a look. So our number was 12. Our high was 104. Our low was 86, uh, which was is six better than our average was before. And our average, 96 FPS. So we got a 16 uh, FPS 
performance boost out of this, which is quite respectable. Um, and right where we want to be, that makes it perfect for indoor wars, uh, arena battles, HVZ, all of that stuff. Now let's see what it does with the short darts. All right, I've got it uh, loaded up with some uh, AF Pro darts here. Uh, again, they're used, so uh, Chrono might vary a little bit, but let's see what we get. Ah, that was nice. Let's take a look here. Again, we had 12 reads with a high of 121, a low of 89, and an average of 101 feet per second. Guys, that is absolutely outstanding. That's right where I was hoping to get this thing. And uh, you know, for what little bit of modding that we had to do up the spring and improve the seal, uh, remove those two locks. Wow, what a, what a meteoric difference. All right, yeah, guys, how about those chrono numbers? That was uh, right where I was hoping to be with this blaster. Uh, we were hitting middle to upper 90s with the long darts, just a tick over 100 with short darts. That means it's safe for pretty much anybody's game uh, these days for Arena Wars, HVZs, and uh, it's still plenty enough to be effective on uh, you know, a standard uh, battlefield, even if the FPS cap is up around 150 or something. Um, so, yeah, 100 FPS out of the Villainator. I'm happy with that. We didn't break anything. We didn't lose slam fire. We gained the ability to fire short darts. Don't know if you can see it now. I've got the long darts all loaded in the outer cylinders and short darts loaded in the inners. So, technically, every other shot changes between. Um, we added this great pick rail to the front here that I just had laying around. And the stock. What a big, big difference here, right? We took the stock from the Spectrum, right, and took the stock and buffer tube from that old Airsoft gun and combined them uh, to make a, you know, very, very functional and adjustable stock. So now that I don't have to choke up on the blaster anymore, they added an optic on here. Oh, this is just a simple red dot, not designed to fit the Adventure Force rail, um, this is straight Picatinny. However, uh, Adventure Force rail and Nerf rail, if you build the rail just a little bit, hopefully you can see it on camera there, right here, um, build that up with a little bit of really heavy either duct tape or I use Gorilla tape. Um, build the rail up a little bit, the knees screw on just fine. That's not going anywhere. Um, the prime's not egregious. It's shooting hard as can be. Um, you know, it's still, still slam fires. What's not to like about it, guys? I think it came out great. I love it. I hope you guys love it. And uh, just a few ideas on what you can do with your Villainator. Um, it's a budget blaster. We didn't dump a ton of money into it, but now we've got a legitimate battlefield contender here. So, yeah, I'm super thrilled. Guys, if you haven't done it yet, hit that subscribe button. Turn on notifications so you can be advised of our future and upcoming content. Give us a like. You know, hit us in the comments. Feel free to send us an email. Yo, hit us up at the shop, check out our Facebook page, and guys, as always, I will put the fan mail address in the description box below. Till next time, this is Chris from Project Nerf saying, have a blast.